Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video I'll be showing you the top 10 craft supplies that you didn't know you needed. This list has both traditional craft supplies and things that you might not think of as craft supplies, but they come in really handy when doing projects. And before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that I've been a lot more active on my blog lately. I posted four times this week, so if you're looking for some more easy craft projects, make sure to go check that out. So with all that being said, let's just get into the video. I know fabric paint can be a bit pricey, but please, whatever you do, do not paint your clothes with just acrylic paint. Don't get me wrong, I've definitely ruined a few shirts with it, but there's no guarantee that it won't crack or peel off in the wash, and then you've just wasted all that time painting it. Instead of spending $5 per tube of fabric paint, you can get this fabric medium for about $7 on Amazon. If you mix this with any acrylic paint, it will make the paint more flexible so that it won't crack or wash off. Honestly, I don't paint a ton of clothes, since I'm not a huge fan of the texture that the paint leaves, but I use this a lot for things like wall art, homemade pillows, bags, and other stuff like that. If you're anything like me and you only paint fabric once in a while, it's much more cost effective to keep a bottle of this on hand instead of having to go out and buy fabric paint. One of the most versatile craft supplies that I have is perler beads. You might think these are just a craft for kids at summer camp, but you'd be surprised with how many useful things you can make out of them. It does take a bit of patience. It's kind of like doing a puzzle, but you actually get something useful in the end. I've made this perler bead shelf with a drawer, these picture frames, this magnetic pencil holder, this keychain that you can put stuff in, and a bunch more. You can find lots of patterns for these online. I'll make sure to link to the tutorials for these and anything else that I show in this video. I definitely recommend buying these already separated though. Even though the big bucket is generally cheaper, Saying that it was a pain to sort them is definitely an understatement. I'm pretty sure I spent between 22 and 24 hours just sorting that huge bucket of perler beads, and that's like 24 hours I will never get back. I bought these mini magnets from Amazon about a year ago, and I keep finding new ways to use them. I originally just wanted them for making shrinky dink magnets, but I've also used them on the back of my perler bead pencil holder to make this key bookmark for my bullet journal and as a magnetic envelope closure. These would be perfect for making one of those magnetic makeup boards that were big on Pinterest a few years ago. Or you could even secure them into a fabric project like a purse or pencil case. They kind of remind me of those magnetic earrings. I don't know if they still make those, but it would be really easy to just glue something onto one of the magnets and have your own fake earrings. Like maybe if you didn't feel like getting your cartilage pierced, I could see it working well for that. And yes, I have to address it, my ears are pointed, I know, I, I, I'm aware. And they're also kind of small for the fake cartilage piercing to work, but if you have normal sized ears, I promise you it'll work. Which let me know if you have your ears pierced for a shout out in my next video. Another one of my favorite craft supplies is shrinky dinks. You can use these for all sorts of projects, like making keychains, labels, magnets, buttons, Christmas ornaments, jewelry, and pretty much anything that you can imagine. For this video, I wanted to try making a geode coaster with shrinky dinks. This project was super easy. I just searched for a geode outline, printed it out, and traced over it with the shiny side facing up with my Posca pens. Then I flipped it over to the rough side and filled in the geode with my Ohuhu markers. I found that acrylic paint pens and alcohol-based markers like Sharpies or Ohuhu markers work best for these. Colored pencils work okay, but they can get messed up if you try to seal the project. They also make printable shrinky dinks, which would be perfect for digital art, or if you're trying to like make pins or something to sell so that you wouldn't have to redraw it every time. If you don't want to buy the shrinky dink paper, number six plastic works pretty much the same way. Although apparently I don't buy anything with the number six plastic because I always look before I recycle things and I can never seem to find it. I'm sure we all know how to make these, you just cut it out, put it in the oven, and when you take it out, it should be about a third of the original size. I colored the edges of my coaster with a gold Posca pen once it cooled, and sealed the top with Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I don't use this as often as some of the other things on this list, but I always like to keep some on hand. This is a great, less messy alternative to resin. I like using it to seal my shrink plastic projects, small wood projects, and even paper projects. I definitely recommend this if you like making jewelry, pins, magnets, or anything small like that. This is more for sealing things though, so if you have a larger project in mind, resin might be the way to go. But if you're like me and you don't do a ton of projects that would really need resin, 
Mod Podge Dimensional Magic is a lot easier to use, and you don't have to deal with the resin smell. I got this chalk pencil at Michael's a while back, and it's perfect for marking fabric. It's really versatile though. You could use it like you'd use a chalk pastel in art projects, and you can use it just to write on a chalkboard too. I like using this instead of a chalk pastel because it's way less messy, and you can get into the smaller, more detailed areas. I just have this white one, but they come in different colors if you need to mark a lighter fabric. And as you can see, you can erase this just like you'd erase regular chalk. I put a jelly plate on my Christmas list this year, and even though I haven't had a ton of time to mess around with it, what I have done has turned out pretty cool. One of my favorite techniques to use is this magazine transfer technique. It took me a while to get the hang of it, but once I figured it out, I was able to get some pretty nice prints. All you have to do is cover your jelly plate with an even layer of stays on ink, let it dry, then roll a super thin layer of paint on top of that. Press your magazine image face down on the plate and lightly rub the back. I got the best results when I did this for about 5 seconds. Peel up the image and go over the jelly plate again with another thin layer of paint. Put your paper on top of that, rub the back, and peel that paper off and then you're done. I definitely recommend starting out with a few magazine pages that you don't really care about because, I mean, personally I messed this up so many times, but once I got the hang of it, it was really fun to do. And if you don't feel like buying a jelly plate, you can actually make your own. I like the store-bought version one though, since it'll last a lot longer. I also made this quote art that turned out pretty nice, and it was really easy to make. Just sketch out what you'd like the art to say in bubble letters, cut it out, and flip the letters over. Put a few dots of paint on the jelly plate and roll it out with your brayer. Stick the backwards letters on top of the paint and then put down your paper. Roll over the back of your paper and lift it up to reveal your print. This technique can give you some pretty cool looking letters too. I combined mine with the magazine transfer technique to make this clueless collage. I swear command hooks, please sponsor me. I feel like I'm using these in every single craft video that I make. If you like making DIY room decor, I'd highly suggest keeping a few different sizes of these on hand. I feel like I don't need to explain these to you, I'm sure we all know how they work. I just wanted to include them because it's not something that I generally consider a craft supply, but I feel like I'm just using them for every single craft project that I do. I'd say about 90% of the things on my walls are attached with command strips. And yes, they are more expensive than just using a nail, but it will save you from having to fill all those nail holes later if you decide to rearrange things. Obviously, you shouldn't use them for heavier or breakable items, but they work great for most DIY projects. Things like my headboard, the tassel garland, these wall pockets, all attached with command strips, so if I decide that I want to take them down one day, it'll be pretty easy. Most crafty people I know have plenty of X-Acto knives, but they might not think of getting a utility knife. These have a thicker blade than the X-Acto knives, and they're great for cutting things like cardboard, foam board, and even balsa wood. Since I make a ton of recycled crafts, I find myself reaching for this a lot. And speaking of recycled crafts, you definitely don't need to spend a ton of money on craft supplies to make something cool. Once you have a few basics like scissors, paint, and a hot glue gun, you can make pretty much anything with materials from your recycle bin. I know it looks like I have a ton of craft supplies, but really I've just collected things over the years and I never throw anything away. There are so many things that you can make with just a regular old cardboard box. Some of my favorites that I've made are this giant pin board, magazine holders, drawer dividers, this desk organizer, labels, my headboard, this DIY light box, my scrapbook paper organizer, and even DIY canvases. So as you guys know, I love duct tape. Alright, before you go telling me to leave duct tape back in 2012 where it belongs, hear me out. I'm so glad that I kept my duct tape from back then because I'm still finding tons of ways to use it. I generally use duct tape to make my cardboard projects more durable. I covered an old office paper box with duct tape for the perfect place to store scrapbook paper, and used it to attach multiple pieces of a shoebox for my desk organizer. I've also used it to reinforce these cardboard storage boxes that I made, and these DIY magazine holders. If you're not a huge fan of sewing, there are plenty of ways to recreate fabric projects with duct tape too. I made this elastic pencil pouch in my last back to school video, and even used some to fix my Doc Martens, which, side note, definitely should be replaced, but these things are freaking expensive. So thank you guys so, so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. Make sure to answer the question of the day for a shout out, 
And yeah, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.